In fact, you are right. Just um, a few weeks ago, one Swamiji, a traditional monk, scholarly monk from Banaras, he called me. Thanks to modern technology, you can call the phone, WhatsApp. So he called me. And what has happened was he was teaching Vedanta, and uh, um, one of his students, a traditional students there, said, you are saying this, but Swami Sarvapriyananda said like this. Said, Who is this fellow, Swami Sarvapriyananda? <laughs> He's on YouTube, he has said. So then he started watching. And then he called me, and he said, I really like what you are doing, and you are doing wonderful work there in the West. But may I, if you permit me, may I point out um, this two problems in the way you in the way you approach Advaita Vedanta. See, the way you approach Advaita Vedanta is heavily uh, it is heavily influenced by Buddhism and Sankhya. First of all, by Sankhya. The, this strong distinction between drashta and drishya. I am the seer, this is the scene. One sadhu in Uttarakhand said, ye jo drashta drishya karte rehte hai na, ye kacche vedanti hai. <laughs> Those who keep talking about I am the drashta, this is drishya, <laughs> these are unripe vedanti, meaning me. So, he's right. Advaita is not about making the difference between seer and the scene. Advaita is about oneness. Uh, is about one Brahman appearing as many. To come to that position, Shankaracharya himself makes it very clear in Aparokshanubhuti. Uh, he says, makes it very clear that this distinction between seer and seen is temporary. This is not our goal. We have done this to find out who we are, this one consciousness, and then absorb everything back into consciousness. Let's see that one consciousness alone appears as all. Did you see what I did today? There's one consciousness, body is changing, mind is changing, waking, dreaming, deep sleep are going, life and death are coming and going, one consciousness remaining separate from all. And then what did I have to do? That Swami told me. See, then you have to work double hard to establish oneness because you have strongly established difference. And so that's one side of it. And the, the second side of it, he said, the Buddhist influence, it is true that Advaita Vedanta teaches the falsity of the word, world, Jagat Mithya. But that is something which was developed in deep, in very strong debate with the Buddhists. So this Jagat Mithyatva is not a central teaching of Upanishads or Gita. The Brahma Satya, that is the important teaching. And Jiva is Brahman, that is the important teaching. That identity, Mahavakya says, says, says that. Jagat Mithya is a very important teaching, but it's a, like a logical consequence of these arguments. So yes, you are right, sir. Uh, in my defense, I will say the reason I approach it this way is it's reasonable. Uh, it is analytical. It appeals to the skeptical mind. It appeals to somebody, as you said, our the Vedic idea to strengthen that. But suppose someone does not have Shraddha in Vedas. How to create that Shraddha? And I've seen in New York, many people who are not interested in religion, spirituality, but they have some hunger. They are attracted by Advaitic teachings, if you put it in a very analytic way. And once they are attracted, I found automatically, without me having to say anything, um, bhakti de develops. Huh? And many of them have taken mantra diksha, many, number of people. Many of them are doing sadhana. But they started with an intellectual curiosity. At that level, you have to proceed entirely on reason. And Sankhya is highly reason-based. So is, um, say, the kind of Buddhism which I use is Madhyamaka Buddhism, Nagarjuna, the Tibetan Buddhism type. That I have had the luck to study with uh, some good professors. So yes, you have to use them, but that is not the goal. Not, uh, uh, not uh, Shunyavada nor also Prakriti Purusha, Purusha uh, that, that is not the ultimate goal. Ultimate goal is Brahman of, of the Vedas, of the Upanishads. You are right. Somebody Swami from that side should speak.